What up, YouTube? This is Charles, Black Dolly Reptiles. Uh, I'm just gonna do go over a few things in this video. Um, first, I built my uh, new incubator here for Black Dolly Reptiles first clutch, the uh, Orange Dream Clown to the uh, normal female. That clutch is gonna be any day now. I'm really excited. She's in the back, she's gonna uh, literally any day gonna pop. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show you guys how I built the incubator. I just bought a uh, $65, 120 quart uh, Coleman cooler uh, for the housing of the uh, egg tubs, shoe boxes. I got the shoe boxes right here to put in them. But uh, yeah, come on over and I'll show you how I put this thing together. Uh, right now I hit, have it on um, 89 degrees. And as you can see, it's super efficient. It's literally pulling zero power like most of the time to keep it there. It's about to, it's about to lose a lot of its heat though because I'm going to show you guys the inside of this thing and how I set it up. So this thing, this cooler has a wicked, wicked good seal. So, boom, you can see oh, the temperature is going to go way down. So this is how I um, have it set up, you guys. I have a um, light diffuser I just cut to fit perfectly here. I have my probe hanging right here. Um, that is for a reason. You want to measure the temperature at the level your tubs are going to be at. So that's perfect right there. Um, I got a little CPU fan that I hooked up right below here, if you look down there. So I have another light diffuser over the heat tape and I have a little CPU fan there and that's to blow the heat around and make sure you don't have any hot or cold spots. That fan is really important, you guys. You need that. We have 12 inch wide heat tape. Um, wired it up myself um, every wire in this build every wire I was able to fit through the drain plug so I you don't even you don't even have to drill a hole in these coolers like they're good to go they're they're basically made to be an incubator you know they're perfect so after you know after I get a legitimate incubator uh, here in a few years you know, this can just be reused as a cooler, which will be perfect. So yeah, the thing's got a really, really good seal on it. Really, really easy to make, you guys, and not very expensive. The whole build probably cost me, I don't know, maybe 80 bucks with all the light diffuser, everything. My, my buddy gave me that CPU fan he had lying around. Um, but yeah, really excited for Black Dolly Reptile's first clutch. Um, I also wanted to go over one other of the uh, breeding plans that I have. It was at first it was almost kind of like a secret project, but I don't know. I don't, I don't really care anymore. Uh, my last video was about the different breeding plans I had. So um, this female right here is Blaspheme. She is a blackhead. GHI pastel yellow belly, so four gene codoms, and I'll show you guys the male I got for. Her. Um, he really, yeah, he's been slamming rats, so he should be ready to go for her this coming September or, or October. I'm gonna start pairing these two. So this is the male I got for. Her. Um, what this is right here, try to get out of the light. What that is right there, that is a banana blackhead GHI. So she is a pastel yellow belly blackhead GHI. He is a banana blackhead GHI. So what I'm going for, honestly, what I'm going for is the super blackhead super GHI. That's what I'm going for. Come on, come on, Barney. I named that snake Barney the Snake because he's pretty purple. Um, so what I'm really wanting out of that pairing is the Super Blackhead Super GHI. 
but the most crazy thing I could get is a super blackhead, super GHI, pastel, yellow belly, banana. Like, I don't even know what that would work, look like, and know that neither does anyone else, because that snake's never even been close to being made before. And uh, that's another thing I wanted to talk to uh, you guys about. Um, not like the more experienced breeders or anything, but a lot of the guys just first starting out. And my advice is, you know, don't start out too big, and don't just buy, you know, I don't advise just going out and buying a bunch of breeder size females that someone else is letting go. You know, there's there's really a reason they're letting those go. And it's, it's not like a terrible bad thing if you want to make some snakes real quick. If you really want to make a brand for yourself and like put yourself away from the rest of the pack and, and really stand out, I suggest going after projects that you hand pick. I, I suggest, you know, Really, and the only way to do that is to raise these snakes up. I got this snake at, you know, 110 grams. Now she's 1,300 grams. She'll be, she'll be going for me, uh, like I said, this September. Um, I also got this snake, which I'm growing up, for the same project. This is Cruella. This is the other female. So um, this one, she gets the size. The other snake will definitely be ready. What that is, right there, that's just a regular blackhead GHI. So when this girl gets to size, I'll actually have a better chance of getting the super blackhead super GHI with her than with Blaspheme. Because Blaspheme's got pastel and yellow belly to, that she'll pass on to quite a few of her babies. So the chances of actually getting just the Super Blackhead Super GHI is a little harder with Blaspheme and a little easier with Cruella. I really love this snake. Uh, Blackhead GHI, it's still kind of a rare combo. Not too many of them are made. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the project I'm going for. I got two females um, to get it done, but you know, this snake can just make a hodgepodge of, of anything you can imagine. You know, four codoms in this female, and then the male's got three codoms. So the, the combos that I can get with this snake are, is insane. Um, so yeah, guys, really try to pick something that, you know, not a lot of other people are, are really working with. You know, like a lot of people go for... Super black pastel already. Super mahogany is a big thing. No one's really tried double super blackhead GHI, you know. And I think that's one of going to be one of the blackest snakes you could, you guys can imagine. Um, I'm still waiting on a male that's going to be suitable for my sumo projects. You know, I'm saving up big time for him. That's I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to spend at least like three thousand dollars on that snake. And that's another thing about this this business. This is my opinion, but you you guys, we, we get out what we put in, you know? Like, if you buy a bunch of cheap snakes, like, don't expect to make anything too crazy or to make that much money. I mean, and, and that's another thing. If you're going into this hobby thinking you're gonna make, make a bunch of money, you're wrong, you know? Like, it's gonna take years and years. It's gonna take a lot of passion. Unless you have a bunch of money already, like Miguel over there, he kind of started up just with a bunch of money, bought up a bunch of really good morphs, and he, he's killing it. Only in a few years, like he's kill, he's literally killing it. I'm not on his level, but the snakes I have are super valuable to me, and that's what's important, you guys. It's year after year. If you're going to be happy with the snakes that your collection produces, you know you're gonna. You're going to be able to go on in this business quite a, quite a long time. For me, you know, it's not too much about the money. I'll be honest, you know, a lot of these projects I'm working on could depreciate in value quite a bit. I do have a lot of recessive stuff I work on, like the killer, Xanthic clown, and all that stuff. Um, but I'll be honest, like, it's, it's not all about the money. I, I just want to put some stuff out there that not a lot of other people are, are producing, you know. So, just wanted to make another little video show you guys how I uh, put together the inky better 
This is going to last me um, next season, too. Because, um, you know, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I only have six, six females, tops. Uh, or actually seven. I have a black pastel leopard coming. She's uh, 1,500 grams. Um, so I have seven females. This, this uh, incubator can hold eight clutches. And I'll be honest, you know, a lot, of, all, all but, all but one of these females will all be first-time mothers. So do I expect every single one of these females to go? No. I'll be a realistic. Last. Last subject I wanted to touch on in this video. Um, I probably should have spread this out in between a few different videos, but I am doing things different than a lot of other breeders might. Personally, I have a few snakes here over 1,500 grams, well over 1,500 grams. I have at least four snakes that are at 1,600 or more grams, but they're not ready to breed. I know that. They were hatched in 2018. It is the very beginning of 2020. I will not pair those snakes until this September or this October, even though they're quote unquote to size now. In my opinion, they're not to size. All my females will be at least 1800 grams before I breed them. That is my personal rule. I don't think 1500 grams is big enough. Most of my snakes are way too expensive for me to risk them being egg bound or complications or, or throwing slugs or going off food or anything else. My philosophy is if you breed a snake that's 1500 grams, it's well known they almost lose half their body weight after having those eggs. So your 1500 gram snake, yeah, when she's building, she might get up to 16, 15, 1700 grams, but she's going to drop right back down to a thousand grams, if not even, you know, a little bit less. And you're going to have to grow that girl back up and hope to God that she gets back up to weight for the next season. I feel like that's very stressful on your snake to try to get back up to weight. If you wait until your snake's 1800, 2000 grams, when she drops that clutch, she's still going to have 1250 you know, 1,200 grams right in that range. She's gonna still have a lot better body condition and she's gonna get back up to breeding size way quicker. So in my opinion, it's way better to wait until these snakes, like most breeders will tell you, these females do not get ready for until three years. You can try to breed them at two years. You might get, get lucky, you might have success with that. But like I said, even though my snakes are to size, that's not, that's not my role. You guys don't just, you know, do what you think is best for your snakes. And that's what I think is best for my snakes is 1,800 grams. That's my rule. I, I'm not going to breed any of the snakes before they're 1,800 grams. And I think I'm going to be successful like that. But yeah, guys, um, thanks, for, thanks for listening. Thanks for checking out uh, this uh, project I'm working on. I'm really, really, really excited about it. This coming 2020 really excited about pairing this girl really hoping that she gets to 1800 grams by september if not i'll just wait till october or november and i'm sure she will be by then um but yeah guys just wanted to uh touch base and do another video first video of 2020 we made it you guys hell yeah but uh thanks guys black dolly reptiles out